in this week's assignment, we noticed a couple of questions that are like uh, slightly out of syllabus. Like BAM did not cover them during the uh, videos. Uh, so I think you have encountered this beta two. Uh, YouTube is working. Uh, uh, Jonathan, is the YouTube clear now? Uh, going live, free, right? Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. YouTube is working. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, there are a couple of uh, questions. Uh, like, they're not too difficult. Uh, we will explain them. But, like, uh, I think one video is probably getting cut or something. So, like, uh, beta two, there is a question. Uh, I think question four uh, mentions beta two that is not uh, discussed during the course, and uh, also dispersion compensating fiber. The concept was I think touched upon, like uh, zero dispersion fibers we talked about, but dispersion compensating fiber we did not talk about. So question number seven and eight are using that we will explain them but uh, like expect their weight is to go to zero sometime later i've uh, we will take care of that and also some phase mismatch in question 10 so uh, those are like out of syllabus we caught it like after <laughs> uh, i mean when we set the assignments we did not uh, notice because like we were not watching NPTEL videos back then. So uh, don't worry about those four questions. So welcome everyone. Uh, today we're discussing uh, the week six content of uh, the course. And uh, this week is all about dispersion. One of the uh, very important impairments uh, that we, we have to be aware of while designing our systems. So this is a basic overview of the uh, week's content. Uh, so we start with what, what dispersion means, uh, which is basically uh, spreading in time domain. Then we uh, start with intermodal dispersion. Uh, who using some diagrams similar to what we talked about uh, last week, uh, uh, how we introduce the concept of modes using the ray picture. And using the same picture, we also discussed how this um, parabolic graded index will reduce dispersion. Then uh, we told about bitrate distance product. Uh, but this was discussed only in the context of intermodal dispersion. But the same thing can also be applied to the other types of dispersion that we will discuss later. Uh, there's some construction going in the background. I hope it's not causing too much of a problem. So bitrate distance product was discussed. Then we moved on to our uh, single mode fiber and what kind of dispersion that the single mode fiber shows. So we talked about chromatic dispersion and the, uh, the two contributors, one uh, part only due to the material, uh, the uh, refractive index being dependent on the uh, frequency or wavelength, and one due to mm -hmm. the structure of the waveguide. That is waveguide dispersion. Both come together to form chromatic dispersion. We discuss them one by one. Uh, uh, before that, we discussed about the spectral spread, how even if you have a uh, uh, light source with very low line width, modulation will introduce its own spread of spectrum. And uh, in case of uh, some sources of light, even the light source can contribute significantly to spectral spread. Then we introduced the concept of phase velocity and group velocity, not going too much in depth, but like mentioned their definitions. Then material dispersion in detail, waveguide dispersion in detail. Uh, then brief discussion about this, uh, what kind of dispersion we see in single mode fibers. 
uh, then zero dispersion wavelength, how like near 1300 nanometers, we see no dispersion. That is uh, one of the use cases in uh, uh, optical communication in server farms. You can uh, see a use of 1310 nanometer wavelength because there uh, the lengths are not too long. So uh, we can ignore the that attenuation, but in, in long distance communication, like 1310 is not feasible. Yeah, it was discussed in classes. Then uh, we briefly touched on the dispersion shifted fibers and why we don't use zero dispersion fibers. But uh, here, like uh, you can also consider this dispersion compensating fibers uh, as in question seven and eight. Uh, We'll discuss after we see that. Okay. Then uh, here is the first mention of this nonlinear processes in fiber. Uh, we will discuss more in detail later in course. And then we briefly touched on polarization mode dispersion that this is something exists and the mean dispersion depends uh, as a square root of length instead of like linearly with length as as is the case for other uh, phenomena that we saw. And uh, it is like, you cannot predict this polarization mode dispersion. You have to uh, test it on field and also in like modern systems, like you will be correcting for this adaptively. Like you will be uh, doing your digital signal processing to compensate this uh, as and when this changes. Uh, like uh, we can show it uh, later during some MATLAB session. Like uh, uh, this dispersion material and wavelet dispersion, we compensate using static filters and polarization mode dispersion. We have to use adaptive filters. Uh, like you don't not need to know too much, but we can show. It. So these are the equations of the week. Uh, so we, from the intermodal dis dispersion ray picture, we saw this like, what is the uh, time difference between a wave traveling straight through and one traveling the slowest wave that is uh, only touching the critical angle like, following that. Uh, so similar, like here you, uh, first, get in, first get introduced to the this time delay concept. Then bitrate distance product, like why uh, we care about it. Like uh, the spectral spread should not spread into uh, more than one bit. So this is bitrate distance product. Uh, again, this is only for this intermodal dispersion it was written. I think in assignment you were asked to do the same thing, but not for intermodal dispersion, uh, if I remember correctly. Then uh, we showed it how like beta depends on wavelength or frequency. And uh, this equation. And uh, we also showed some example of Gaussian pulse to demonstrate the like, uh, modulation of a pure sinusoid will lead to uh, a spread in the frequency. Uh, oh, this did not come true. So, <laughs> then uh, we introduced this phase velocity and group velocity. Uh, group velocity is just d omega d beta. We write like this because beta is more uh, beta is a function of frequency like free frequency is not a function of beta. Uh, then uh, during our discussion of material dispersion, we uh, wrote down the expression for group velocity, like how it depends on, uh, depends on the uh, refractive index varying as a function of uh, wavelength or frequency. Uh, and uh, for uh, 
uh, wave traveling at uh, velocity vg it will take l by vg time to travel through the length of the fiber so uh, for two different uh, values of this group velocity how what is the time spread that we write here uh, uh, so basically we introduce this material dispersion parameter which is equal to this this part uh, similar to this uh, we also discuss about waveguide dispersion so there we assume that uh, there is no dispersion due to variation of uh, refractive index with uh, wavelength or frequency and we only consider the variation due to the uh, waveguide so uh, this is basically considering the n effective part uh, so this we use the universal bv curve to find this uh, group velocity expression and then uh, the time dispersion we find using like these are the equations you and uh, the Anyway, the uh, total dispersion will be the sum of uh, material and waveguide dispersion. And uh, uh, this BV curve, we uh, saw the shape like it, for single mode, it will start like this at 2.4. The second mode will show some like this kind of curve you can see. And we are only concerned at the frequency range uh, uh, near fifteen fifty for some specific values of v. Uh, so, like near that range, you can uh, empirically write uh, v is like a minus b by v whole square. Uh, this is empirical relation. You like you are just doing a curve fitting. So. Uh, Using this, we can uh, simplify some of our calculations. And finally, we talked about polarization mode dispersion and uh, how this is a statistical quantity. So uh, we talk about the average value of this dispersion and that gets specified. And and uh, basically, uh, what what PMD you will get, uh, you will have to check for your case, but you can see the ex uh, expected value, the average value you can check. Uh, now, uh, the concept that were like, uh, that in question four, you were asked, asked about this beta two, which was not defined during the course. So, uh, beta two is actually uh, when we write uh, beta as a function of omega, we actually uh, write the Taylor series exp expansion about some uh, some frequency. We can write like beta naught plus uh, times. some constant one. So basically, uh, you can do a Taylor series expansion of this uh, function, this beta as a function of omega, and 
like this in this expansion you would write like this part as this part is beta one then this part is beta two so like uh, this expansion was never touched upon during the course but like this beta two you like you will uh, encounter beta one uh, i am a little rusty now but uh, like this is not dispersion this is uh, like this particular part is uh, considering a wave traveling through a fiber without dispersion and like the primary dispersion part is this part and uh, other diminishing returns will come from other expansion under higher order terms so uh, in the assignment question you're uh, asked to find beta 2 there the expression will actually come something like uh, so what you are asked to fi uh, find is actually this uh, it is not some some complicated thing but uh, because it was not uh, touched on the course, like we will not uh, consider it for evaluation. Uh, you can still answer, but uh, you can, I, I believe you can easily find this expression to, through any textbook, but uh, because we did not touch it during the videos, like you can ignore that question. And uh, we also talked about dispersion compensating fibers. So uh, basically, we saw dispersion against uh, dispersion against uh, wavelength. Some graphs we saw, and how we can uh, modify the geometry to uh, make the graph shift. For example, at fifteen fifty. We discussed how the uh, typically cited value is uh, t. D is equal to seventeen picos per second per kilometer nanometer. Uh, but then we uh, talked about zero dispersion fibers. Uh, those. Uh, those will have d going to zero at fifteen fifty. And for single mode fiber, standard single mode fiber, uh, this the zero dispersion wavelength is in year thirteen twenty five. It was mentioned in uh, during the course. Uh, uh, I think 13, 10, the more common number, I think. So uh, the standard single mode fiber will also show zero dispersion at this wavelength. And below that wavelength, it will show negative dispersion. Uh, some negative value. Similarly, uh, what dispersion compensating fiber does is like, uh, while traveling through some distance, there will be some dispersion accumulated, like D times L times delta lambda. There will be some uh, accumulated dispersion. And uh, what dispersion compensating fiber is, is uh, some fiber that we have manufactured that gives a very large uh, negative uh, dispersion at the frequency that we are concerned with. So uh, after this, after our signal travels through this uh, some length L1 say and D1, uh, we will add some dispersion compensating fiber that will add a negative dispersion
such that it cancels out whatever dispersion was accumulated during this uh, single mode fiber. So what we want is like d1 l1 is equal to negative of d2 l2 so that like uh, this delta lambda is coming from the source and the modulation so that will remain constant uh, but the effect due to the both material and waveguide dispersion that should get cancelled during uh, a short length this l2 will be short uh, so we want this l2 to be short and this dispersion to be a large negative field. So the dispersion that we want, like it, they will, uh, like there will be commercial vendors that will say, what is the D2 that they can offer? So from there, you will have to find L2 is equal to some. Or uh, like if you have an idea, like what kind of length you can use, like you can find what kind of, Dispersion values you can find, uh, you need to use using this. Like that, those are the questions that are like uh, question number seven and eight are asking you to find something about this, this scenario. Uh, but DCF was not uh, discussed during the videos, that's all. And like, uh, I think there are a lot of questions this week about this WDM systems. Uh, basically they're giving you uh, some Delta F, you, need, you are asked about what is Delta Lambda, those kind of questions. I think we have uh, shown it uh, before during such sessions also uh, for, uh, if these values are small compared to the f and lambda values, you can use like this. Like this relation will always hold, but uh, you can different use differential calculus and like this expression will hold only if. Delta lambda, delta f are small. You can use it for one channel and all, but uh, when they're asking about, like, uh, say, how much frequency uh, band do you have between 15, 15 nanometer to, say, 16, 10 nanometer, uh, there you can use this. It's like more accurate. Uh, like this expression will always be more accurate, but this is acceptable enough. Uh, this, this you can also write as yeah. I mean, lambda is the known. This is the most commonly known number. Like we rarely. Uh, we rarely cite in terms of like terahertz values. So I think those are all that was required for the yeah, assignments. Uh, now, are there any questions? Uh, I know uh, this week's amount of videos less, I think, only. Uh, Two and a half hours, I think, compared to the usual four hours and all. I hope nobody had trouble. If you have any questions, you can either ask or use the chat button. Uh, on YouTube, uh, Venus FO Tech Vlog has uh, talked about this. Uh, questions are out of video discussion. Uh, beta 2, then dispersion compensation, compensating fiber, 
and phase mismatch due to uh, dispersion. Those are out of syllabus. We found out later that it was not discussed during the NPTEL videos. Those are usually discussed during the offline videos, so we got confused. Uh, those, uh, if you try to solve, you can try to solve, but their weightage will go to zero. Like you don't have to worry about them. Solve them if you want, or don't solve them. They will get removed. Like, uh, they won't count towards your final evaluation. There's some logistical problems. If there are no questions, yeah. you can use the discussion forum also. And we'll uh, make an announcement right now that you don't need to worry about those out of syllabus questions. Uh, I mean, ideally, you can look at textbooks and find the answers. But yeah, we have not discussed this, those questions. So are there no questions? Uh, sir, uh, sir, am I... uh, your voice is breaking. Uh... Now I am audible, sir? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, sir, uh, assignment 11, it is defined that the dry fiber have acceptable losses. Uh, please highlight some point regarding the dry fibers. Uh, okay, what is the question I'm checking with? Uh, sir, problem has been given. The dry fiber have acceptable losses over a spectral region extending from 1.3 to 1.6 micrometer. So such a like uh, question has been said. Huh. Sir, shall I read whole the question? Uh, yeah, dry fibers have acceptable losses yeah. over some region extending oh. from 1.3 to 1.6 micrometer. Estimate yeah. the capacity of WDM system covering this entire region using 40 GBPS channels uh, spaced apart by 50 gigahertz. 15 gigahertz. Yes. Yeah, so sir. estimate the capacity it is asking. So... Uh, Okay, what is sir dry fiber? What it is? Uh, so uh, in the loss, in the uh, uh, loss of uh, this uh, attenuation graph you have seen against uh, wavelengths, no? It shows something like uh, some peaks. Uh, uh, I think the minimum value comes at minimum value, you know, comes at 0 0.2 dB per kilometer at 1550. Uh, but right after that, there is right near that. Uh, I think right after that, but, uh, check that in the graph, like there is a peak due to uh, OH absor absorption. So uh, if there is any water during the fiber manufacturing process, uh, if like uh, any uh, OH ions get trapped uh, in the preform, like during manufacturing, if there are OH ions embedded in the core, like you will have more absorption at the uh, specific frequency where there is this uh, OH resonance. So uh, the same thing, if you uh, uh, have like very good control over your manufacturing process and you can avoid this 
uh, OH ions. OH ions come from water. Like, uh, like hydroxyl ions come from water. So if you can uh, complete the entire manufacturing process with uh, like no presence of this uh, water, uh, you can avoid this, this peak. And uh, then the attenuation curves follow something like this. So earlier, if you could only use this band, now you can use the entire like larger uh, wavelength range. That is what is like given in the question. Like this is 1.3 micrometer they're saying, and this is 1.6 micrometer. Uh, using those numbers, I think this, this peak should come before. Uh, I'll, I'll have to check. But like uh, using dry fiber, you can avoid this OH peak. That's all. I think it is covered during some video during the course. Yes, sir. It has been covered. Yeah. So dry fiber means this only. Like you had, you don't have this peak, so you have some larger range. In the question, like it, it bears no importance. Okay, sir. In, in the question, it is just saying like like this, like you are given the starting and ending frequencies, like thirteen hundred nanometer to 1600 nanometer uh, like what is this gap in delta lambda you know like what is the uh, change in frequencies that is all and okay, sir. Uh, and they're saying that like this delta f is being uh, split in this 50 gigahertz chunks so you have some some uh, like you can only fit so many uh, number of channels and they are also saying that in this each 50 gigahertz they are sending like 40 gbps so you have to find out like how many channels can you fit and each channel is sending uh, 40 gbps so what is the uh, final capacity 40 GBPS will be confined in some 40 gigahertz. Yeah, that is what is the question. Assume the 40 okay, GBPS. Yeah. Fitted into each of these 50 gigahertz channels. Okay, if there are no other doubts. Okay, sir. Okay, uh, we'll close then. <laughs> Happy Teacher's Day, you know. <laughs> Happy Teacher's Day. Same to you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, these are the equations. And these are the concepts.
ओके हैप्पी चलते ओके लिव नाउ इफ यू हैव एनी डाउट्स जस्ट यूज द डिस्कशन फोरम लाइक लास्ट वीक आई वाज अ लिटिल स्लो आई मीन आई बीन कंटिन्यूअसली गेटिंग स्लोअर बट यू विल गेट योर आंसर्स